it's another dreary day in our little city, and I would like to run an experiment. For too long, I have been shitting on these expressionist pastels. I find them a little bit too hard for the paper that I like to work on. The Mungio, being a little bit creamier, works so much better on that paper. But what happens if you use paper that is designed for pastels? Eh? Eh? That in and of itself does not make an interesting video though. So I'm also checking out how well they stack up against these ones. I compared these to the Expressionists, said that these were a poor knockoff of the Expressionists, and I think it's about time that I get knocked down a peg and eat my words. We will be doing a picture on Canson's My Tense paper. I believe it is the white. Uh, it's just, it's, it's that. Please join me and enjoy. All right, voiceover time. How are you all doing today? I'm just sitting here early in the morning with my cup of tea and my hair still soaking wet from the shower and I am ready to go, folks. So to kick us off, we have the Canson's My Tense paper or Me Tense or, you know what? Hold on, I'm gonna see how you actually pronounce that. Canson Me Tense. So tonight we have the Canson Me Tense paper and it is very fancy. It is, uh, I'm not gonna do this accent anymore because I don't want to get arrested by the French police. And shown up to the stage already, we have Artist Loft Oil Pastels. Uh, no real excitement there. The crowd is not cheering. They are not jeering. They are kind of just a little bit asleep. But on the other hand, in the other circle, they're... How does sports work? In, in, in the other corner, that's how sports work. In the other corner, in the other corner, we have Cray Paw Expressionist brought to you by Sakura. A Japanese company these pastels are a little harder than I like they are they're nice they're pigmented they're they've got a, a good load but on smooth paper they kind of fail completely and the paper that I usually use the Fabriano 1264 just a little bit too smooth they really like the pastel paper if you're using pastels you might as well be using pastel paper I mean you don't use uh, cartridge paper when you're painting with oils it's just you got to use the right materials for the job but on the other hand it is mixed media paper and I do like to mix my media so also the mixed media paper is a lot cheaper uh, this particular sketch is also done with a Prismacolor Colerase, uh, Garlet or... No, it's Vermilion. Prismacolor Colerase Vermilion. I'm still pretty bummed that they discontinued these Colerase. It means that the only real erasable colored pencil that I'm going to be able to get nowadays is... I think it's just the friggin' um, Crayola erasables. That's sad. Oh, I'm gonna miss these guys when they're gone. I know they weren't as popular as like the Very Thins or the, the uh, Premieres, but come on guys, you're hurting me. You're hurting me specifically. And I just, I don't like it when people hurt me specifically. Oh, and we're finally starting in with the oil pastels. I kind of skipped over a little bit, but uh, we're going in straight to the eye. I usually like to start with the eye and immediately I noticed that the white is not very strong in these oil pastels. You kind of have to get them to stick to the page. Um, they don't blend. The, the color doesn't show up very well if you blend it. So that's that's one strike. I, I like a strong white. I like strong light colors. These ones are very transparent in general, but so far they're working pretty good. They're, they're, their pigment is showing up pretty well. Uh, in case you couldn't tell, I'm both trying to speak highly of uh, what I consider to be an inferior product and also getting a little excited about how nice these pastels are actually doing on this paper. It turns out that if you're using uh, $10 pastels, using a $30 paper will cancel that out and you'll just get like a regular like $20 pastel on $20 paper. It's fantastic. I highly recommend if you've got these terrible uh, pastels that you've got sitting around, like Color Factory or Artist Loft or whatever, try them on Cats and Me Tins. It might seem like it's a bit of a waste of resources because you're using cheap art supplies on expensive art supplies, but you know, maybe you'll find that they're not as bad as you thought they were. So I had originally split this face down the middle, kind of, 
um, you can see on the forehead where the line is supposed to stop and it goes about halfway down the nose and halfway down the lips and uh, it kind of bends around a little bit for the for the scarfy bit and I, I forget about that pretty quickly. I start drawing in the whole nose with these expression or not expression so that comes later with these artist loft pastels and about probably about two or three minutes from now I, I look at it and I go Ah, crap. And I just, it's, it's, it's a failing of mine that I just get too carried away sometimes. But, you know, part of the, part of the fun of having an art is being able to do that. Is just being able to let yourself just go with the flow. And before I did art, it was very hard for me to do that. I was a very reserved person. Not that you could tell from the way I talk on the internet. So overall, these pastels, simply a treat on this paper. I take back the bad, mean things that I said about them on the mixed media paper. They are not made for mixed media paper. They are made for pastel paper. I know that now. And I kind of just, I, I, I let my instincts run wild and I just go crazy with abandon in the background. It's just like a, he's standing in front of an old quilt. I think I've decided I have decided that is what he's doing. He's standing in front of an old quilt and it's just so colorful. I probably should have stuck with like a single uh, value of colors and different different um, different chromas, but, but the same value. But there's 36 colors to stick with and I've only used probably about 15 of them. How can you expect me to just choose a couple? It's just, it's not done. It's not copacetic, buddy. But that is about it for the Artist Loft Pastels, and that is definitely the first take that I did to say that. Yes sir, Bob, and now we're on to the Expressionist! First of all, can I just say that these pastels are gorgeous. They start off so crisp and clean, and the the, uh, the wrapping is this beautiful, um, what would you even call that color? It's like a, it's like a pinkish brown, like a, like a mauve, or like a, like a desaturated rose. It's, it's gorgeous just whatever it is and as you can see each individual pastel has a barcode on it so that means that you can buy them individual it is very hard to actually find stores that will carry them i only know of one in my city and i live in a city with close to a million people um so like you you gotta look and if you can't i'm very sorry like um maybe try to replace them with Ooh, I don't know, Neo Pastels. Uh, they're not quite the same. These ones are very, very hard, and Neo Pastels are more buttery, like the um, like the Mungio Gallery. But I mean, it, like you, you can replace it a little bit at a time, and it, it'll it'll be easier on your wallet. So maybe this way you'll actually get a a nice set. A nice set. Here I am doing it again. This this is a nice set. The colors are pigmented. They're beautiful. They've got gold and silver in there. Who can go wrong with gold and silver? And, and I, this is going against all of my instincts to say nice things about expressionists. I hope that you appreciate that. Uh, so I, I feel like I've made my opinions clear on this. The pastels work so well on this paper that it is simply not a contest. Uh, they are miles above what I thought they were originally, and I will have to change my answer officially on the chart. Um, with, well, I mean conditionally. Like, uh, Mungio, I think, are better because they can go on more surfaces, but uh, Expressionist and Artist Loft are both good if you use proper pastel paper. Whether that be pastel mat, mitant, or, uh, I don't know, they <sighs> Strathmore's got a pastel paper, but I don't I don't like it as much. It's quite thin. I think it's only about 60 or 70 pound paper. And I don't know, but uh, we're gonna change the subject a little bit and talk about the upcoming couple of weeks and months. So a lot of you follow my stuff for the oil pastel that I do. Um, I will be switching for the most part to oil paint. And that is due to the nature of the grant that I received. I need to work on oil paints and I need to show that one can make a marked improvement simply by uh, following simple instructions and not really needing to interact with the teacher, kind of learn at your own pace. That's what I did with oil pastels. I watched a couple of tutorials online. I don't, I don't really like the term self-taught because that implies that I took in no information during my, my uh, learning process. Um, I prefer the term self-directed because like, I mean, every everything's going to be an influence on you. And it's just a matter of, of where that, whether you pay for that influence or not, to be honest. 
Okay, so oil paints. That is that is going to be the nature of the channel for the next little bit. I might spice it up every once in a while with a little treat for myself going back in with the oil pastels, but for the most part, you're gonna be seeing me bust up my easel. And bust up I shall! So we've got a little bit over a minute left. That's not a lot of time when I start rambling, but uh, final thoughts for this is entirely the um, the credit goes to the Canson Mitant paper. It is, I can't believe I never got this before. It just, the price intimidated me. And I was thinking like, oh, you know, $30 for paper, you know, I can just get the Fabrietto for 15 and it'll be fine. But no, it's not fine. It's very much not fine. You gotta get the good stuff if you wanna get the good process. That didn't work. You gotta get the good stuff if you wanna have the good process. That does, uh, doesn't rhyme. I, I'm gonna workshop that. I'm gonna come up with, uh, I'm gonna bring it to marketing and I'm gonna see if I can do anything good with it. Um, but until then, um, A plus for cans and me tints, probably about a C for, uh, no, about a B for um, artist loft oil pastels and probably about an A, A minus for uh, Cray Paw Expressionist. So those are my official rankings. I am almost out of time. I just wanna tell you all that next week will be more of a vlog style video where I'll be painting, you know, the, the finding my style video that I did a little while ago. It'll be a little bit more like that where you'll see a couple of paintings in a row. That's it. Bye. I think it turned out pretty well. I actually, I really enjoy this patchwork. I think I probably should have stuck with like one uh, range of tones. Like a dark, a dark color or a light color or this going, this going back and forth is a little bit muddy, messy. I still like it though. So overall, this paper is continuing to blow me away. If it can make me like artist loft and expressionist pastels, I don't think there is a limit to its power. It can do, I, I will, I will have it run for prime minister of Canada. It'll, it'll, I care. It'll run on I care because it just looks that dang good. So that's about it for me this week. I will be starting a intensive grind of oil paints. I did a quick video a couple months ago about this new easel. I'm looking forward to actually breaking it in. I've only used it a couple times, just enough to get paint on it basically. An easel doesn't really look like an easel until it has paint on it anyway, so we're halfway there. So join me next week. I'll be doing some oil painting videos. Uh, I have not quite decided what exactly I will be doing yet, but it will be something, and it will be something. That's about it for me, for real this time. I hope you all have a wonderful evening, and I will see you all next time. Bye bye <laughs>